You've been tasked with making a data pipeline. You need to get data from A to B. It can't be that hard, can it? A few lines of code here and there. Do you even need that much? There's all of these cool ETL tools that just connect stuff and run. It really is easy to make a data pipeline, but is it that easy to make a good pipeline? You start with a source and a destination. Let's just say a source is a daily CSV file and a destination is a reporting data set. That's the core of it right there. First, we wanna make sure we have good auditing and logging. We wanna know what files we process so we can validate if anything was missed, when the file was loaded so we can alert if data gets stale, what credentials were used to access data for security purposes, volume of data in the file so we can alert if it's outside the expected parameters, duration of the process to make sure it's not getting hung up or slowing down over time, and that's just the start. You'll probably come up with more as your pipelines grow more and more complex. And you also want error handling. So if your auditing does detect a problem when running, it can handle that and either continue with other processes, alert the responsible parties, or attempt a rerun. Two, we want the pipeline to be repeatable with the same result. This means if you run the file through once, clear the data, and run it through again, it should be identical. That's straightforward. We want what's in the file to be what goes into the data warehouse. But it also means that if you run the file once, then run it a second time, a third, a fourth, and fifth, without clearing the data, the end state is the same. We don't want four copies of the CSV in the data warehouse. That means you'll either need a method of detecting what's already loaded and ignore those records in transit, or you need to land the data in staging environment and then upsert into the final destination. Or you could deduplicate records in the final destination after you've loaded the duplicate files, and that's probably the worst option. We want this so if there is an error, it's easy enough to just rerun everything without having to worry about what did or did not get processed. And third, that brings us to the idea of self-healing pipelines. A traditional ETL pattern was to have incrementing date timestamps to determine what data needed to be ingested. But there would be an error loading, bad data that needed to be cleared, or some other issue that resulted in data from the past needing to be reloaded. That meant manual effort to find what time period was incorrect and then forcing the ETL to go back and load those records. That's a huge time sink for the engineers. The self-healing pattern will vary on the data set, but it's finding a way to get a delta from your source and your destination, and that will drive what data gets processed. In our example, maybe we log what files our data belongs to, and each time the pipeline runs, it compares the file list in the destination to the file list in the source, and then it ingests all files that are missing. Maybe our source just overwrites files, so we could add a data lake to put the data in before moving it to the data warehouse, so we could have a bit more control. This also works great when your source is a database and records can have a hash or watermark to compare. Or sometimes you have APIs where you can do an initial delta check before targeting specific data to pull out of the API. It's not always easy, but it's worth the effort to try and make your pipelines as self-healing as possible. Fourth, now with our staging tables or data lake, we can consider decoupling our EL and our T. This means we can land our data in a raw format first, then take our time to transform the data into the data warehouse into a model that will work best for our reporting team. Since this is a CSV, we've probably lost any data types as everything is converted to strings. We can add those back, maybe clean up some field naming, parse out some combined fields, whatever makes the reporting table a little bit cleaner and easier to use. But while doing this, we won't lose our raw data since it's stored in the data lake. So when the report needs to be changed, we can just change our transformation and not worry about the extract and load. Fifth, we want to make sure our report is always available and can be refreshed. Truncate and load is a common ETL pattern, truncate or deleting all the data from a table, and then refreshing it with new complete data set from the pipeline. It's faster than updating, and it's convenient for just refreshing the full data set at the end of a pipeline. The problem is you're truncating the table that the report feeds off of. The report won't be able to refresh during that window, which depending on the pipeline could be a significant amount of time. So to keep the reports online, we'll need to eliminate truncate and load steps to anything that the report is using directly. Another alternative would be to build a semantic layer, which is another step after the modeled data to put it into a business-friendly format, and it applies common business logic and calculations. Semantic layers should also be always available and update seamlessly. And sixth, our pipeline should allow for good continuous integration, continuous deployment practices. 
In other words, made out of code, able to connect to Git, and can be version, staged, deployed, and rolled back automatically or with minimal effort. But it goes beyond just having a tool that connects to Git. The pipeline has to be designed in a way that allows for rollbacks. What if you deploy a new version, run it, discover an error, and need to roll back? What happens to the data you just loaded? This can get really complicated when working with data structures. And all the steps leading up to this point will help. Being able to track what data was in the bad load, removing it, and then allowing the self-healing process to fix the problem when the pipeline is rolled back and rerun. So yeah, pipelines are really easy. Just move data from A to B, plus a few other steps. And if that's not enough to consider, as a bonus, you can also think about reusable patterns so you can rapidly deploy new pipelines, scalability so you don't lose performance when you crank up the data load, and managing cost across various tools and across runtimes. Of course, in order to make a good pipeline, you need to know what tools are available to build one. So be sure to watch this video to break down how each cloud platform handles the steps needed to make a data pipeline.